Hello, this is Tim Perfit from Two Canoe Software, and I want to talk a little bit about the uh, changes we've made in MTS, um, but I want to start with an example. So behind me, I have four Mac Mini uh, computers, you can see here. I have three of the standard ones, and or the older ones, and one of the new T2 processors. And in the back of each one of them, I have a MDS uh, automaton. And it's programmed in a special mode so that when I, when I put in that mode and reboot the Mac Mini, uh, it'll automatically go in recovery mode and kick off my workflows to completely set it up again. All right, plugged it back in. So now all four Mac Minis have the uh, automaton plugged into it. Um, and so what I'll do is uh, I'll just kick it off. I'll kick off, I'll send a command to those Mac Minis to be able to um, reset themselves up. So the way I do that, they're all headless. Um, so we could do this through a Apple Remote Desktop or Client Management Software, but I'll just use SSH. Um, and you can see if I do, uh, if I do connect, uh, connect to server, you can see that these are the four Mac Minis that are on my network um, to be able to communicate with them. If uh, I can just SSH into them using uh, our administrator account, it'll go in and not require password. There it goes. Uh, so it didn't require a password and I'm, I've gone into it and I'm able to communicate with it. So I could individually go in there and send the command, but instead I'll show you the command. I made a little script called um, refresh all. And all it does is it's a little bash script that, that says for each host name, these are the four host names. Um, it loops through and it SSHs in, it prints the message, SSHs and just runs the command. Here's the command, go into recovery mo mode and then reboot. So let me go ahead and run that command. So I did that. It goes in and SSHs into each machine. You should see, uh, you should chimes in a minute. Once, uh, once you, all these go into recovery mode. There we go. There's one chime. There we go, second chime. Of course, the third chime. And of course, the, we have one of the new Mac minis back here. You can see the ones, brown one or the space gray, I apologize, not brown, The uh, it, it doesn't have a chime. So you're not gonna hear it, see it, but you should see uh, well, the monitor, there it goes, the monitor should light up as it's booting into recovery. And then uh, it'll go ahead and start re-imaging it. And if you actually look and see, uh, these are now disappeared from the network. Uh, and now they're in the middle of re-imaging uh, or resetting up the machine from the recovery partition. So while that while those runs, let me show show you uh, what some changes that we've actually done in uh, MDS and how I set up this configuration. Um, so we've added some exciting new options in one four, um, and, and so let me kind of go through those. We added in the ability to connect to Wi-Fi before showing the workflows. So if you are using your target machine needs to be connected up to Wi-Fi, you usually have to go to the airport menu. Uh, or the Wi-Fi menu and choose it. We now can do this automatically. Um, the automatically run workflow was there before. Now we have this new send logging information. So this, uh, as soon as a, these machines start up, we'll actually see the progress go through and we'll see uh, the status of each one as they uh, report in. Um, so that's kind of the high level one that'll apply to all workflows because that's the, the kind of the startup piece. And if we go into one of the uh, workflows, one I'm actually using, um, it, uh, and I'll show you how exactly it sh it's set up. So we provide a description, the Mac OS, it, we selected a Mac OS installer. One of the new things in 1.4 is the ability to select the .app installer instead of having to create a disk image, which is very convenient. I set it up to install the Mac OS and erase and install it. Um, we now have the ability to uh, not just select packages and apps, but also scripts and profiles. Um, so I selected a, a packages to install the software and any scripts and profiles I want installed. Um, this is really important for the setup that I have here. The, it, it has ability through the UI to create a user. So I called one called TC admin, um, short name TC admin, password is two canoes. And this is critical for being able to communicate with the machines without having to um, provide a password is you now can provide an SSH key. So if you put that in, the user account that's created has an SSH key and you can, and com you can run commands remotely without a password. Um, there's an option to allow the user to administer the computer and also to hide if you want to. I don't really care because I won't have anybody logging into the, 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 the uh, login window directly, but um, this would be important for labs or those kind of things.
We also had a whole slew of new options. Um, the ability to wait for the network before installing resources. So a lot of times the Mac would come up when it was installing packages, it wouldn't have network yet. So you can have an option to wait for that. You can have the ability to join Wi-Fi. This is after it's done installing Mac OS. Um, one of the options I set was the computer name to use the serial number. And that's why it showed up as a unique identifier. You can see these Mac minis here. They all have stickers on the front of them. Um, that has the serial number, or at least the last three characters of the serial number, so I can help identify which one it is. Um, have the ability to skip the setup assistant, uh, and we added in the enable location services. Because one of the things that happened is when you skip the setup assistant, um, the time would be off because it didn't know what location you're in. If you allow in, uh, location services, it'll pick up that through location services and it'll set the time correctly. So we added that through the UI. Um, another option is to skip the user privacy and location setup. So when you first log in, it won't prompt you to set up Touch ID and, and location services. Those are all configured, uh, or that, that configuration is skipped. Um, enable SSH actually turns on the SSH service. So the user account will have an SSH key, and you'll have SSH. Now you can run a command remotely. And this one's pretty exciting, is allow administrators to screen share. It automatically turns on the screen sharing functionality. So when those Mac minis are uh, done being set up, they'll install Mac OS on it. It'll be available via SSH and be on the network, on Wi-Fi, and I have Ethernet as well. I'll be able to communicate via SSH and send commands, and I'll also be able to screen share with them. So that's a very uh, powerful way to do that remotely. So I, uh, now that I have all this setup done, I have to make it available to the Mac Minis. And the way you do that is either save it to an external disk. And this one is not very convenient because then I'd have to plug an external disk into each one of those Mac Minis. The more kind of better way to do this is to save it as a disk image and put it onto a web server. And so I'll go ahead and save this. Uh, I'll call it mini cluster, and then I'll save it uh, to the desktop. And from there, I'll copy it up to this web server. Um, and what it'll do is it'll save all the resources that are need, needed, and you'll be able with the automaton to um, mount that disk image and make it available. So um, let me show you what it looks like on the web server. So we have an iMac uh, set up here um, on our uh, a network. And you can see here there's one that's called uh, Mini Cluster. Uh, right, let's see where it is. Mini Cluster. There it is, minicluster.dmg. So this is the one that's available. And that what the Mac Minis will do is they'll actually mount that. So literally all it's doing is running the HDI util command saying mount, and it's providing this URL. And I could just copy this URL and I'll paste it in there. And it's yet mounted that one that's now available um, through uh, the file system. And it just runs the command to pull up the workflow selector and run it from there. So um, how is that done automatically? Because I didn't touch these machines. And I showed them, I pointed at them, but I, I did not uh, actually um, touch them, right? So it's all being done remotely. Um, and the way that's done is through this automaton. So, so this is our autom automaton that this is already, uh, it already ran the command, so I can pull this out now. So this allows me to automatically mount the volume and run the workflow. And you can actually see it's running here. It's got the workflow selector. Uh, it's already erased the disk. It's uh, now installing the software. If I want to see what the settings are on this automaton, so let me go ahead and plug this in. Okay, now I'll click on configure automaton and it will open up and show me the settings. And you can see that the settings are exactly what I just did on the command line, which is HDI util mount, and it goes to the iMac, mounts that uh, Mac mini cluster and uh, disk image, and then it runs the slash volumes MDS run. And so what that does is it uh, runs that workflow selector. And you can see here, it pulled it up. Well, it actually finished. You can see the Apple logo that's on the screen. And it's uh, setting the machine up. Um, so that's that's really what it does. And so the, um, the other option is the boot and recovery and run workflow when automaton is plugged in. So I deselected this, which means it's just sitting on the serial port waiting um, for you to send it a command. And that's that script. I sent it a command. It said, oh, okay, time to press, press command R. And then it uh, you reboot the machine over SSH like I, I showed you before. And then it's holding on the command R, boots up, runs this command, kicks off the workflow, and everything automatically sets it up. And it'll pull off that disk image that's off of the uh, web server. So that's some of the new features in 1.4, as well as how to set it up with SSH keys and a lot of the options to make completely 
resetting up and reinstalling software through a central server location easy, right? I've been doing this multiple times a day, being able to reset up these four Mac minis and it's worked flawlessly. So thanks for watching. Please visit us at twocanoes.com to learn more about MDS um, and also on the MDS uh, or the Mac Deploy Stick Slack channel on the Mac Admins uh, site. Um, and it's if you Im image or set up Macs, uh, you really got to check out MDS because it will make your life a lot easier. Thank you very much for watching.